Good afternoon. The title of my talk is Effects of Buddhist Religious Chanting on Brain Blood Flow, Water Content, Tubulin and Microtubules, Exploring Connections to Our Core Theory. Before I start, I wish to thank Mrs. Behar Montefiore, Professor Hameroff, and the organizers of this conference for this great opportunity. I also wish to thank in advance all those who will have the patience to listen to this presentation. About three years ago, in 2021, it was demonstrated that the in vitro multifractal arrangement of tubulin in cardiomyocytes changes in response to audible sounds. The fractal size and the lacunarity of tubulin change according to the type of sound. A mantra induced the most significant modifications. This is the experimental setup where the cells in vitro were exposed to different types of sound. This figure coming from that article demonstrates the difference in a tubulin fractal dimension and lacunarity when the cells were exposed to a mantra or control, no sound at all, or a so-called hate signal when the sound was uh, ti odio or I hate you in Italian. Do these results suggest that tubulin, that is a cytoskeletal protein, is able to hear somehow audible sounds and interpret their meaning? Well, it appears to be the case, at least from the molecular point of view. About one year ago, I demonstrated that tubulin has a high degree of similarity with the human transmembrane channel like protein 1. That is a sound sensitive protein responsible for forming, forming the pore of mechanosensory transduction channels in the hair cells of the inner ear of vertebrates. A high degree of similarity was observed in the presence of aromatic amino acids as well as, as in the propensity to form alpha helices that are responsible for sound sensitivity. In other words, at least from the point of view of molecular biology, tubulin can actually hear and possibly interpret audible sound. In the study cited below, I compare the sound frequencies of the mantra affecting tubulin with those of the Buddhist religious chant Nam Myo Ho Renge Kyo, a chant known to be associated with increased psychological resources and mental health. The following slide shows the spectral frequency analysis of the chant Nam Myo Ho Renge Kyo as it was performed by a long-term Buddhist practitioner. We see a small peak at 8 Hz in the EM spectrum. 8 Hz is the Schumann resonance of the Hertz. We see a much higher peak at 116. This frequency is interesting because it is known to influence chloride ion movement with changes in membrane potential in cells, in particular in neurons. Then we see five very well-pronounced peaks in the area of the so-called solfeggio frequencies. Solfeggio frequencies have been known for centuries to affect, in a positive way, a number of physiological parameters. Recently, it was demonstrated, and you can retrieve the publications from PubMed, that these frequencies have a positive impact on the human endocrine and autonomous nervous systems, they improve the survival of human brain astrocytes in vitro, decrease anxiety in rats, so their effects are not limited to humans, and they even reverse the cognitive and endocrine deficits in the zebrafish. They reduce the total concentration of reactive oxidative species in brain tissue, so it appears that they have a sort of a universal effect. Sound waves directly interact with the brain independently of hearing, since bone conduction transmits sound waves to the brain. Sound waves generated in the voice box or the larynx resonate in the oral and nasal cavities and in the sinuses. They reach the brain through the thin bones of the floor of the skull that have sinuses and foramina, in particular the sphenoid and the ethmoid. During chanting, believers typically repeat a nam myo ho renge kyo 15 to 20 times every breath, that is a three-fourths respiratory cycles per minute, with rapid inspirations and prolonged exhalations. More than 10 years ago, in 2013, while working at the University of Firenze, Italy, 
We demonstrated the thickness and water content of the brain change during inspiration and exhalation. Transcranial ultrasonography of the brain, as it, has, it is represented here, shows how thickness of meninges and cortex and water content of the temporal lobe are greater at the end of exhalation. Quite obviously, changes associated with breathing affect the transmission of sound waves through the brain, since the sound waves have to travel a longer distance in a medium with more water. Chanting, like any other brain activity, is associated with electrocortical activity that in turn is associated with EM waves. Although sound waves cannot directly interact with EM waves, when they both share a common medium, and that medium has electrical properties that vary with mechanical strain, as it is exactly what happens in the brain, the two undulatory phenomena can actually interact. Such an interaction is based on piezoelectric effects. Proteins have piezoelectric properties. Microtubules can be considered resonant cavities filled with the piezoelectric material that are proteins, where sound and EM waves can interact. Resonant standing waves, either EM or acoustical, will then produce fixed patterns of EM and acoustic properties inside microtubules. Therefore, microtubules may be able to detect and interpret in the context of our core the interaction of sound and EM waves. The EM and sound waves generated during vocalization of nam myoho kyo interact with each other in the context of microtubules. They are then interpreted by the information processing machinery of the microtubules, ultimately contributing to changes in the level of consciousness. In the article published in 2023 in the International Journal of Radiology and Radiation Therapy, I demonstrated how repetitive voluntary generation and exposure to sound and EM waves constitutes an example of recursion that leads to changes of brain activity and therefore to consciousness. There is an interesting corollary to all this. The interaction of the sound waves generated while chanting nam myo ho kyo with the EM waves generated by brain activity leads to an EM vibrational signature. Such a signature is unique for each type of chanting or recitation that, therefore, is associated with a unique level of consciousness. In other words, even assuming that the chanting of different mantras such as OM activates the same areas of the brain, Nevertheless, since the sound generated by the vocalization of each mantra or recitation is different, the signature of each EM vibrational interaction and its effects on cells are different, not interchangeable. In the specific case of recitation of nam myoho renge kyo positive changes in psychological resources and mental health have been thoroughly described from the psychiatric and psychological point of view, as we shall see in the next slide. This slide describes two articles that were published in 2018 and 2019, where Italian Buddhists chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo were studied from the psychiatric and psychological point of view. In the article published in 2019, the authors examined almost 400 Italian Buddhists and found increased mental health in comparison with normative scores. In the article published one year earlier in 2018, the authors examined almost 200 Italian Buddhists and compared their psychological resources with those of Catholics and atheists. And they found that the Buddhists had the more or higher psychological resources. I am particularly fond of this article because it was conducting in the city of Firenze, Florence, Italy, where I was born and where I began to practice Buddhism 45 years ago. So it is highly likely that some of these subjects are good old friends of mine. Let's move from psychology and psychiatry to neurology. The next slides show changes in brain activity in a long-term practitioner of Nichiren Shosho Buddhism before, during, and after performing the liturgy of Nichiren Shosho Buddhism, that is, chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. 
Changes in neural activity and brain blood flow in the Brodmann area 10 of the prefrontal cortex, this one here, were measured by functional near-infrared spectroscopy, as it is known that synaptic activity is correlated in a linear manner with changes in cerebral oxygen consumption. This area was chosen because it is known that it is involved in integrative aspects of personality, social cognition, autonoetic consciousness, theory of mind, humor appreciation, and self-awareness. Changes in brain activity were observed during a five-minute neurofeedback training sessions performed before, during, and after Nietzschean and social liturgical practice, that is, chanting nam myo Now, it is well known that brain blood flow and neural activity increase during neurofeedback sessions. Control, here and here, indicates the increase recorded in a neurofeedback session performed before chanting. So we can take this as control. During indicates the increase recorded during chanting. And as we can see, the brain blood flow at the, and the neural activity are much, much lower during chanting. This might correspond to the so-called emptiness of mind or quiet mind. Interestingly, after the chanting, there is a very significant increase in brain blood flow and a corresponding significant increase in a neural activity. And this happens after the completion of the liturgical practice, and this corresponds to enhanced level of consciousness. Let's move from neurology to non-locality, or the so-called mind-matter interactions. If consciousness is based on quantum phenomena, as it is postulated by the Orcor theory, then it is known that quantum phenomena have the property of non-locality, the so-called spooky action at a distance, or spookhafte Fernwirkung, as Albert Einstein wrote. As a matter of fact, the ability of volition or intention to affect living and inanimate objects, like water, for example, has been known for centuries and scientifically demonstrated for more than 30 years. This article was published in 1991, demonstrates the human volitional effects on bacteria. And then I like to quote all the articles published by the research group of Dr. Redin, demonstrating the efficacy of human volition or human intention on water and how this affects plant growth or mesenchymal stem cell growth. Here I wish to describe the effects of local and non-local exposure to nam myoho renge kyo on microbial metabolism, and in particular on the fermentation of apple juice or milk. Cultures of probiotic fermenting microbes were exposed to the chanting of nam myoho renge kyo for about 30 minutes, either directly in front of the practitioner or at a distance and then the efficacy of their fermentation was measured. In the case of apple juice, we measured the production of ethanol that is indicated by a decrease of specific gravity. And as we can see, there is a marked difference in comparison to the control cultures. In the case of fermentation of milk, we measured the decrease of pH that is a very well known indicator of fermentation, of successful fermentation. And also in this case, we can see a very marked decrease. You may wonder, where is the novelty here? These things have been known for more than 30 years. So uh, what is new here? Well, the novelty is that, for example, in the articles published by the research group of Dr. Redding, the intention was sent, so to speak, by three Buddhist monks, not one, three. And in the case of the paper published in 1991, the subject who was ascending the volition was, was a very well-known, talented psychic healer, Olga Worrell. So we could say that the results that I have shown you before were obtained by those whom we could call professionals or people with a specific talent. In the case of the results on microbial fermentation, however, the results were obtained by a completely unenlightened 
lay person with no specific talent that is this presenter. So this demonstrates the power of this type of recitation. We are at the conclusions. Buddhist religious chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo in the context of the liturgy of Nichiren and Shoshu is associated with changes of blood flow, oxygenation, and neural activity in the Broadman Area 10 of the prefrontal cortex. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo chanting is also associated with local and non-local effects on microbial metabolism. It can be hypothesized that the effects of chanting on consciousness and psychological resources are mediated by tubulin, thanks to its newly described property of sound sensitivity. Sound and EM waves generated by chanting may interact inside microtubules and change their information processing properties. Preliminary results that have just been published in the American Journal of Immunology suggests nam myoho renge kyo chanting acts directly also on cells of the immune system, a system that has the attributes of consciousness, a system that can gain access to an amount of information greater than what is accessible to the brain, since it is not constrained by brain's reducing valve that is responsible for cognitive bottlenecks. And to conclude, a word of caution. I wish to clarify that the present study has no pretension of comparing different approaches to meditation nor different religions. More importantly, I have no pretension of trying to reduce a highly regarded religious practice such as Nichiren Shosho Buddhism to neurophysiological mechanisms operating in the brain or elsewhere. The religious and spiritual experience of practicing Buddhism and chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo goes well beyond brain activity, neurotransmitters, or quantum phenomena of consciousness. It encompasses a mystic dimension that, although not in contradiction with science, can't be explained solely by science. Nevertheless, Nietzsche and shown in Buddhism states that Buddhism is reason, and that nothing is more certain than actual proof. I believe that, despite its limitations, this study could be considered a contribution to the actual proof. I thank you so much for your time and attention.